uh, James Singer, who is also co-founder of the Utah League of Native American Voters. Mr. Organista. Piali, Nanotoka Kolei, Juan, Notokitka Organista, Niewa Chapotepec, Mexico. Hello, my name is Jolei Organista, and I'm originally from Chapotepec, Mexico. Um, I introduced myself in Nahuatl, which is an Udo Aztecan language um, that my ancestors and my grandparents speak. Um, I am an immigrant. I am uh, a dual citizen of Mexico and United States. I'm a proud Utah, and I'm also the state deputy director of LULAC. Um, LULAC is the largest and oldest Latino organization in this country. Um, and um, I went to West High School, just a couple of blocks away. I went to the University of Utah. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the demographics and the demographic changes that have been here in Utah. So between just uh, 2010 to, to uh, 2015, these are the most recent um, demographics and uh, data that we have on the population of Utah. All minoritized groups, you know, people of color, have grown, grown faster at a faster rate than all um, non-Hispanic whites. Um, and uh, the minoritized uh, groups used to be in 2010, 19.4%, um, and they are now 21%. And so that's just within five years, right? Um, and within just the, the population all in Utah, 13.7% um, is uh, Latino. And so um, the medium age of most people of color is under 30, as you can see. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, millennials, um, whether they be uh, people of color or not, or they are a big percentage here in Utah. Um, they're clear what is spoken by our legislators, especially our representatives at D.C. that represent Utah. That echoes throughout in Utah, and especially to our young people, right? They hear that, and they are not only aware, but they are very clearly seeing how they're being represented and or being um, thought about and or not thought about and so my daytime job is to, uh, I had to get a substitute to come here <laughs> um, and I am with students young people every day and um, them hearing especially students of color and some of my native students that I have um, when they heard what was happening from the voice of or the mouth of Senator Hatch they were really not only sad they were kind of disturbed um, and so it's a, it's a clear thing that words from our representatives do hurt and they're, they, they're stuck. They're, they're heard and they're not going to go anywhere. And that's why we're here as a, to also be in solidarity um, to make sure that uh, Senator Hatch apologizes with, about this. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lavinia Tamoy Latu. I am the Director of Civic Engagement for the National Hong and American Society. Uh, we focus on voter registration and civic engagement. I'm also the co-founder for Multicultural Engagement for Utah, which is the Me For You Coalition. Um, Me For You is here in support of our Utah Native brothers and sisters in this fight to protect Bears Ears. The Me For You Coalition is comprised of nine organizations of color, our coalition recently launched an initiative that focuses on elevating the voices of our communities of color. Um, and a few issues that we will be advocating for is voter, suppre voter suppression and gerrymandering. These two issues have weakened the voices of our native communities in Utah and has had a direct impact in fighting to protect sacred lands and specifically bears ears. Hatch's blatant disrespect and ignorant remarks on Indians not understanding what is at stake here is unacceptable. We are here to stand firm with our Native brothers and sisters to let, that, let him know that um, we urge him, actually, to apologize immediately. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Carol Sever. I'm one of the co-founders for uh, Utah League of Native American Voters. I just want to say thank you for coming this morning. We really do appreciate it and your support. Um, 
So here we go. Respectfully, sir, what this order undo designation of national monuments does is straining relationships with Native American tribes and community members alike. There is no law. This is no longer just a native issue. The national park system is visited and enjoyed by all people, not all residents, not only residents of Utah, but also from those around the world. None of these monuments that Trump signed into executive order sprang out of the air. It was handcrafted by the higher being for us to protect and keep for future generations. This is why Native American tribes, communities, along with our allies, have spoken up and spoken against this executive order to undo designation of national monuments. But this executive order doesn't just examine those designations to determine whether they are within the scope. What it, what it is doing is it is also abusing Native American tribes by language, our culture, our heritage, and also abusing the hardworking, dedicated people who live quietly in local communities. Previous secretaries from <laughs> many communities, as the designations came to be, it is now our duty as engaged citizens, yours as an elected official, and the secretary, secretaries as the voice of the administration to listen thoughtfully and carefully to many voices from all walks of life, from the tribes, the local communities, from around the country, and to be open to the wide range of viewpoints and make decisions based on what is best for the greater society and also the land for the long term. Let's think of the next generation. Thank you. Aloha, everybody. Uh, my name is Carl Moore. I'm the chairperson uh, of Pandos and also LCC Air Protectors, and um, I'm very privileged to be um, with my friends here, with my family back here, and also with my friends and family over here. Um, I'm encouraged by the people that are here. There's a lot of people that I see over and over and over again um, that, that help support us as Native Americans. Um, I had actually written a speech um, but Dominique kind of pointed out earlier when she wrote me, she, she said, you kind of speak from your heart, and I do, I speak from my heart. So I'm going to speak from my heart, and number one, um, I just want to encourage us all to continue our prayers, our prayers for our leadership, prayers for our Native American brothers and sisters, prayer for indigenous people all over the world. You know, our, our prayers work, and that's what we've been given as Native Americans, and, and as all people, I believe, we've been given prayers. We've been given a way to communicate with our Creator, and I think that needs to continue. So concerning uh, Senator Hatch and what is happening now in, in Bears Ears and Zinke, um, I, I feel that it is, it's a revelation of, of culture. And also if we want to go to our president, it's a revelation of our culture. It's, it's a, it's, it reveals the nastiness that is colonialism, the nastiness that is paternalism, the way that they talk to us, the way that they speak down to us the way that we are treated in our own country, in our own land. This is our country, you know, this is our land. Um, this is something that people need to remember, especially here in Utah where there's a big emphasis on the sacred, a big emphasis uh, on taking care and, 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 and doing those sacred things and, and being able to, to worship how they want to worship. Um, with that emphasis, I, I feel that, that our sacred has been usurped. And this was always, been our sacred. When it comes to the, 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 to the, the divine giving us our land, giving us our stewardship, um, <coughs> that can't be taken away. Divine mandates don't ever go away. And I, I'm, I'm here to say that here in Utah, Native Americans have been given stewardship over the environment and also over social structure. That's something that people overlook. Not just the environment, but the Creator gave us ways to live, gave us ways to treat each other, you know, gave us those things. So in saying that, I just encourage our leadership, you know, Patch and Bishop and Chaffetz and all of these people and, and Herbert, uh, Love, these people need to start listening to us, really. They need to start listening to us. And, and I'm here to actually demand that they listen to us. And we want to, to have our voices heard because they deserve to be heard. 
Yesterday, um, our tribal liaison for Pandos, Cassandra Begay, um, was just trying to have a conversation or asking some questions. Wanted to have a conversation with Zinke. And I don't know if you saw this, and you maybe you can go back and look at this, but he, he belittled her. He said, be nice. Think about that. Be nice. <laughs> and that's something that we've been basically told with a finger for years and years, for 500 years. Be nice. Be nice. Listen to us. We know what's best for you. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you God. We're going to give you um, civilization. We're, we're going to give you a civilized way of living. That's what we've been taught forever, for a long time. And it's, it's time that that stops. You know? It, it's time. Right now is time. So I'm not going to talk anymore, but again, I just I, I appreciate you guys for being here. And um, I just saw, I got a, got a glimpse of James back here, and I'm, I'm really happy for James and what he's doing. We really need to be supporting this. This is something that we need to be doing, supporting Native American leadership. And if they're not Native American leaders, every single one of those elected officials needs to have a counselor be consulted by Native Americans who have stewardship of this location. So thank you, Kukwai. Thank you, Carl. And thank you for your other... One thing I want to inter reiterate and, and underscore is the Me For You Coalition and the Just Us Initiative has united the communities of color across the state of Utah and has united the voters of color across the state of Utah. 300,000 voters, Mr. Hatch. We demand that you apologize to not only the Native Americans, but to all the people of color who you have offended. During his 40-year term tenure, Mr. Hatch, sponsored 38 bills that dealt with tribes. I won't even tell you how many bills that he sponsored for the oil industry. In 1995, Senator Hatch introduced a bill called the Utah Public Lands Management Act, a bill to designate certain public lands in the state of Utah as wilderness and for other purposes. In this bill, Senator Hatch struck out and delivered the Native American cultural and religious uses of public land, specifically removing access to sacred sites by Native Americans for such purposes as wood gathering, um, for personal use or collecting herbs or plants for religious and medicinal purposes. Mr. Hatch, I am an Indian. We are Indians, we are Native Americans, and we fully understand your intent in opposing the Bears Ears National Monument. We fully understand, Senator Hatch, why you silence our voices. We fully understand, Mr. Hatch, why you insist on speaking to us in a condescending and uh, manner and tone. Senator Hatch, we fully understand why you use racially charged language. Senator Hatch, your animus toward our spiritual and traditional ways to protect land and, and preserve it stands in the way of your donors. We fully understand that your voice belongs on Wall Street to the tune of $1.2 million. We fully understand, Mr. Hatch, that your voice belongs to Big Oil to the tune of $450,000. Mr. Hatch, it is not us who do not fully understand. Since 2011, the Navajo Nation and other tribes have worked diligently. Have worked diligently with their best and brightest to not only assess, but study, and to meet with the local community members in Southern Utah, in San Juan County, and to meet with your office, Senator Hatch. When I worked for the Navajo Nation, you refused to meet with me as division director of the Navajo Nation Department of Natural Resources. We, we tried to meet with the entire Utah delegation. We worked with the, Utah, with the Utah delegation for a time to find a compromise, yet the delegation was not willing to compromise. Senator Hatch, we fully understand that you condescendingly call us Indians, implying we do not know much, but we understand that you use this as a technique to hide the oil and gas interests you want so much to enter and destroy our sacred grounds. Yeah. Senator Hatch, it is you who do not fully understand how much we really know. 
We more than fully understand, Senator Hatch, and we, sir, demand that you apologize to our communities, to our leaders, to the countless thousands across the country who have worked so hard to get educated, to understand, and to help their people. Your three little words, Mr. Hatch, cast a long shadow of any good work you have done in the last 38 years for our Native people. I'm James Singer, and I'm running for U.S. Senate. <laughs> Times such as these test the resiliency of our democracy and the ideal that we, human beings, stand equal. It is difficult to believe that is the case when we review the history of our nation. Power has remained concentrated in the hands of a few, the wealthy, males, and whites. And although there have been many strides throughout our history to extend these rights to other groups, time and again we see this goal fall short. When I read the words that Senator Hatch uttered, presuming that indigenous people don't know as well as he, and that we have to take his word. I am frustrated more than anything else. I'm frustrated because of an America, because the promise of an America for all seems more like an illusion than reality. How can we expect to overcome years of racism and oppression at individual and systemic levels when one of the most powerful people in the US government views us as unintelligent we, indigenous people, are lawyers and policy analysts. We're sociologists and economists. We're community leaders and volunteers. We are mothers and fathers. We are grandparents, daughters, and sons. We are human beings, and we should be treated as such. I wish I could say that I'm surprised by this kind of paternalistic, racially charged tone that Senator Hatch has taken. But the truth of the matter is that oppressed groups have sadly come to expect this kind of destructive rhetoric. What has changed now is that we are more awake than we've ever been. We believe that we can enjoy society where we are treated as equals, that our way of thinking and doing can be done without condescension, that we can live in a society where we can make the decisions over our lives, our economies, families, culture, and environment. We are acting now so that we can secure that. That is the kind of reality I am willing to fight for. Bears ears is not a land grab, Mr. Hatch. It is a form of institution. Mm -hmm. It is an acknowledgement that our history has some very dark spots, and they are relevant to today. It is a way of reaching out and seeking a form of forgiveness for past atrocities. It is empowering indigenous peoples and their governments to reclaim a proud history and land and push forward into a promising future. Bears Ears is our story of survival and perseverance. We demand much more than an apology, Senator. We seek the fulfillment of the ideals of America, equality, justice, life, and freedom not just for the people who look, think, and pray as you do, but for all of us, especially at this time, for the indigenous peoples of this land. Protect the sacred. Protect bears. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, we'll now have time for questions, if there are any questions. Yes?
so, so the history of the Bears Ears, I had the privilege when I worked for the Navajo Nation to be a, the, the question was, isn't this a national park that um, is for, that was designed specifically for um, people alive today, and that would be the, the tribes and their continued access and protection of what they consider sacred, and it is. I had the privilege of working with the Navajo Nation um, some years ago, and had the privilege of being in the beginning, at the very beginning of this entire process to establish Bears Ears. And what I can tell you for certain, everything that Senator Hatch, Senator Zinke, or Secretary Zinke, Congressman Chaffetz, Congressman Bishop, uh, Congressman Stewart, including Senator Lee, have said about the collaborative process is mischaracterized, it's misinformed. They have led, and I don't use this lightly, a dis disinformation campaign around Bears Ears in Southern Utah. From the very beginning, we worked assiduously to engage the Utah delegation. We worked with them on options of a public land conservation, a public conservation area. We worked with them on a national monument. We worked them on a national park status. They refused to engage. We worked tirelessly to call them, email them, and they refused to engage. And to hear now that they say that there are no tribes involved that do not support this in Southern Utah. When you have an elected official who is not elected by the Navajo Nation, nor is elected to a position in the Navajo Nation, they endow her with the authority to speak on behalf of the Navajo Nation. That is misinformation. With all due respect to Rebecca Benali, who I respect as a woman Navajo leader, but not a leader of the Navajo Nation. She is a San Juan County Commissioner, and she does not have the authority to speak for or on behalf of the tribes or the Navajo Nation. Now this pattern of silencing begins there. Senator Hatch, Secretary Zinke, and others refuse to listen to rightful um, uh, people of the land, those who were duly elected in democratic tribal institutions to speak for them is a blight on them. It is a complete um, moment of, long moment of disrespect for us as tribal people and indigenous people. And so all I can say is from the very beginning, we had worked very, very hard. But as you can see from his 1995 bill, Senator Hatch had no intention of allowing tribes to enter those areas. There is anyone that will not allow tribes access to that area. It's the Republicans, not the current plan as it is right now. Other questions? So, so the question is, if if Senator Zinke does recommend, or Secretary, excuse me, Secretary Zinke does recommend. Um, um, rescinding the National Monument, what is the recourse? Tribes right now um, are, are putting together an entire legal strategy to, um, to sue, if that is the case. They will, they will continue to fight, because this is a fight worth fighting for. Other questions? No. Any last words from our folks here? Okay, thank you for coming out.